didn't catch it. Ha ha ha. Hello friends, today we are going to build modular spaceships and some extra tips. The video is separated into small chapters, so get straight to the point that interests you if you want. Everything that appears in this video is in a downloadable file in the description. So let's go. Let's get our workspace ready for the final render. World Shader Black. A sun lamp instead of a point lamp. And activate ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and motion blur. Now we're ready to start the party. Go to textures.com and in the metals tab go to containers. Find and download the following textures. The more fine details the image has, the better. If the spaceship is filmed from a far distance, even a video card image does the job. Let's make two materials as an example. Delete the cube. Add a plane. Add a material to the plane. With the Node Wrangler add-on activated, press Ctrl T and select one of the images you saved. Add two array modifiers, one for X and one for Y. Now let's fix the texture on the Texture Paint tab using the Clone tool, remembering that Ctrl plus left mouse button to select the source. We will create three color ramps, one for the specular, one for the roughness, and one more for the bump, which you will connect to the bump node. The rules for color ramps are always the same. In specular, black has no reflection and white has. In roughness, black has a clean reflection and white is 100% matte. And in bump, black it is a low surface and white, high surface. Taking this into consideration, each image needs a different adjustment, and you can literally base it on what you're looking at. Look at the difference without the specular matte. The black region is totally reflected, because it doesn't have any texture informing that this region should not have any reflection. So it's important to at least try to use all these texture maps, for a slightly more realistic texture. And now we are going to do the whole process again for the second material. But at the time of the cloning tool I had to take more creative freedom. Anyway it worked. Remembering that the color ramps must be adjusted for this texture. Two tips that are valid for the entire video. Make simple sketches on paper before starting to create anything. I guarantee you it will make your life easier and always apply the scale and rotation of the finished objects, and have planned where the point of origin of the object will be. Right-click on the material name and add it as an asset. Look how cool it is from throwing the texture into a cube. It looks like a tech box. Let's now create two bodies for our spaceship. Let's create a triangular and a round body, using bevel, to make the edges realistic. After applying the smooth shader, apply the scale with Ctrl A and add a bevel modifier to make the edge more realistic. We will do the same for the circular body. To close the mesh use the grid fill with Ctrl F. Copy the modifier with Ctrl L. Let's cut the body with Ctrl E. Mark scene. Cut where you think you need a separate area. Unwrap the mesh with U. Sometimes there is a distortion on the UV map. Use this tip to fix it. Select a face and unwrap it with light map pack. Then use that face to align the rest of the vertices of that piece to it with follow active quads. The main face must be active. You can change the size of the seams to get as much information as you need from the texture. After you've made the seams, sometimes it works to select all the vertices and use unwrap with cube projection. Let's flap wings now. We will create two types of wings. The second can't even be considered a wing, but is inspired by a little-known movie. You can create the shape you want for each type of wing. The important thing is UV mapping. Here I used the previous technique to unwrap the mesh. Take a face, press U and select light map pack. Then with the face loop selected, click on the unwrapped face to be active and select follow active quads. To make the second wing, I use a UV sphere, and as you can see in the video, I created this shape. I also selected my seams very carefully, and when I unwrap it, it looks the way I want. These are the hours of creativity, but it's ideal to keep it as simple as possible, and then make the necessary adjustments to the mesh for each ship you assemble. Since you've watched this far, why don't you consider subscribing? <laughs> Never mind. Now let's make some batteries. 
At all stages, it is nice to use some references, but in this one it is very important to use them. We're going to make a simpler battery and a crazier one. Remembering that the download file is full of spaceship parts, we're going to use a cylinder surrounded by cylinders for the simpler battery. Use Control F, fill grid to close the ends of the cylinder. Basically, it's going to be a variety of extrusions, edge loops, and you can do it however you like. Let's try to get close to this shape, and now we're going to mark the seams. Use the technique explained earlier for distorted seams. Now let's create the craziest one. I thought of something like energy springs. We will try. First we create a circle and leave it far from the origin point and leave it standing. Now we will use the screw modifier. Adjust the settings as you like. Increase the iterations to a longer spring. Now we will fit it into two cubes with bevel. Create a hole in the cube to fit the spring. Now add the materials and see if it looks cool. If you want to open the spring UV map, you have to apply the modifier, mark a seam and use the technique explained earlier. Now for our spaceship to move, it needs... I particularly like shiny and radioactive fuels. But we can make ordinary barrels, so we'll make one conventional and one more fanciful. For the barrel we will use the cylinder and make extrusions, insert faces and make the barrel more technological. Cut the seams as you see fit, but it's nice to separate the circular part of the barrel and make it straight on the UV map. Now for the most fanciful, we can make a hollow cylinder with a ball of energy in the middle. Remember to keep it as simple as possible. With these two fuels it is now possible to move on to the next stage. To make your spaceship move, we will need to create the thrusters. In this case we will create a more common one, and one made by electromagnetic energy. Kind of. Nothing scientifically correct of course, ha ha ha. The first one we'll use a cylinder, some extrusions, using I to insert faces and Alt S to scale the face loops in the direction of the normals. Nothing too complex. Combustion will be the last chapter. Now we are going to make the energy one. This one we will also use a cylinder, but make it in a cone shape. Now we are going to create a torus, and with Alt S we are going to make it thinner. Put four or five rings around the cone. The first and the last we're going to use some design that holds the torus. We're going to use a radioactive shader on it. Now just animate the emission of the material to make the energy. The next step is a killer step. For the weapons, we will create a laser cannon and a laser antenna. You don't need to follow 100% of the design. This is just a start of what you will create. The cannon is simple, but it will be two separate objects. A UV sphere to start with, we will cut it in half and fill grid. Now we will create a crease in the middle, where the barrel of the cannon will move. Now for the barrel of the cannon we will use a cylinder, and you can add details wherever you like. Apply rotation and scale, parent to sphere. You can add a limit rotation so it only moves in the proper space. Create the seams and unwrap the mesh. Now for the laser antenna, we create a UV sphere. We cut it until it looks like this, create a pipe and at the end make a ball with shift alt s. Now we'll use the screw modifier like in the battery one, to spread the energy in the pipe until it reaches the sphere at the end. 
Make the final design as you see fit. Always remember to apply rotations, scales, and mark the seams. Let's make our little beauty land. To make our spaceship land, in my mind immediately comes wheel landing gears. But we have to do something more technological than that too. So we will create three types. One as a leg, one as a retractable ramp and one with wheel. The first two will be the same. Only the way to animate will be different. For the first two we will create a cube and make the shape of a U with a closed end. Put the origin of the object at the end as well. In this crease there will be another cube like this one. Copy and paste, adjust, and do it again. But in the last cube we will use a normal cube with an open end. This opening is where the landing gear foot will be. Parenting in the correct way, the movement should be this. In the hole of the last cube, we create two more cubes that fit next to each other. They will come out and form a foot. To animate the retractable landing gear, just don't rotate the other two cubes. For the wheeled landing gear it's practically the same thing, but only a cube will move with the wheel at the tip, and the wheel can be like this. You can easily get lost in this part. Here you will create as many things as you want, as simple as possible, small doors, windows, screws, energy boxes. We'll spread them around the spaceship. Let's assemble our spaceship, make it look good. In this part you can use your creativity, but if you want to get a kickstart, follow the video. To start off the body of our spaceship, I used and modified a bit two standing triangles. I took a standing circle, and placed it in the direction of the first triangle, leaving a gap behind the ship. I will use Ctrl M A lot in this part with pivot on the cursor and the axis you want to duplicate the object. I fitted the wing to the end of the circle. I had to modify the wing a little to fit it well. Make adjustments to the mesh if you need to. The important thing is to keep it simple. I created another triangle lying in the middle and used it as the base of the spaceship. Now we start using the objects we created. First the thrusters, I added three behind the spaceship. As a filler I put a battery on top of the ship and duplicated it to the other side. And behind the two gaps I put three radioactive fuels. In front of the spaceship I placed two cannons. Remembering that when parenting to the ship, parent only the body of the cannon because the barrel is already related to the body. Same thing for the landing feet I'm putting on now. Be careful when parenting. I added doors on top to add extra details and two side windows. I created some edge loops to select the parts that will be the windows of the spaceship. Extruded to create some depth. Applied a reflective material. Before we parent all the objects, adjust the texture as you like on each of the objects. Remember not to leave too few details, and not too many and get too messy. Parent the objects in a single object, if you want even in an empty object. And now we will make this beauty fly with combustion. We will create one combustion for Eevee and one for Cycles. They work on both, but the volume one doesn't work very well on Eevee. First we will create a cylinder and make a cone shape. Add some edge loops and a subvision surface modifier. Now select the top faces and create a vertex group. Use this group in the wave modifier we are going to add. Invert the selection that will not be affected by the modifier. The wave effect is very different from object to object. So in this part you will have to adjust a lot. You can follow the video if it is enough for your object. The important thing will be the texture that we will add to influence the modifier. Use the clouds texture and insert a keyframe on the size. Open a graphics editor window. Press N. Go to the modifiers tab and add a noise modifier and the strength to more than 1.5. The idea here is to make the object move unpredictably. Keep adjusting the wave modifier options until you find the one you like best.
after you think it's good, we'll add a noise texture to give it a more fiery face. Add whatever colors you want to the color ramp, increase the emission later. Add a driver, on the z-axis, by writing hash frame divided by 10 or 20. If you're going to do a scene from far away and don't need to focus on thrusters, this is the best way. Let's go now to the more realistic version. Create a cube and add a material to it, and connect a gradient texture, change it to spherical. Now let's align the circle with the side of the cube. For me it worked location x0, y, minus 1, z, minus 1, and scale x1, y2, z2. Now delete the principled BSDF shader and add a principled volume. Lower the density to 0 and connect the gradient texture to the principled volume emission. If you are in shader view and not seeing volume, make sure volumetric lighting is on. For a better visualization of the combustion effect, decrease the tile size to 2 pixels and increase the samples to 128 if you want. Now add a noise texture and multiply the two textures with mix RGB with a factor of 1. Adjust the texture as you like. We will add a color ramp to better control the flame effect. Now we're going to create two color ramps, one to control the strength of the fire's lighting, and one to control the colors. One thing I do is manually increase the color value. The maximum is 1 on the bar, but I put the value of 4 to give it a more intense glow. You can use whatever colors you want. I used this mixture of light blue and salmon orange and I liked it. Now we are going to give movement to the flames. This part is important to render sometimes 10 frames to see if the effect is cool, as it is difficult to see the effect in real time. We will use a driver as in the other texture. Write hash frame and divide it by the value that you think is best, both on the x-axis of the coordinates and on the noise texture. Change it to 4D and add the driver to the W value. You can play around with your shader and make this kind of animation, of course better than mine if you have more time. This is a problem in rendering the flame with Eevee. It crosses certain objects depending on the distance. In small scenes it can be corrected, but with spaceships, long distances in the same scene, it's a headache, in cycles it works normally. So depending on the scene you can even use Eevee. What I'm going to say now is important. While I'm creating I like to listen to relaxing and stimulating music, all instrumental so I don't use any extra part of my brain unconsciously. It helps in the flow of creation. Do you know where you can find good instrumental music, even covers of popular songs? Here on my channel. Check it out. I play musical instruments too. Ha 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 ha. Come enjoy this playlist and help your friend Igor. Create and free yourself. Until next time.